Hello, it's Ian Anderson Gray here. This is the Confident Live Marketing Show. This is episode 48, and we're going to be talking about how to host a virtual live event. And we've got Benjamin Dell here, who is from Hey Summit. He is the CEO and founder of Hey Summit, which is some pretty cool software we're going to be talking about today on how to move over from a, a, an in-person event to a virtual summit. How are you doing, Ben? Very, very well. I, I hate to correct you within seconds. I'm the founder, but I've actually got a fantastic CEO. Oh. So I, I don't want to make him think I've taken him out of a job. Well, that, that, that's, that's I, I, do you know what? I always, uh, I kind of assume the founder is the CEO and that's just a really bad mistake to make. <laughs> to be honest, most of the time it is the case. I'm, I'm a terrible CEO. <laughs> have you been a CEO in the past? I have, yes. Um, it, it, I've learned over the years where my strengths lie and it's yeah. not in the day-to-day -day grind. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it's good. It's good to know your strengths and your weaknesses. <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. So, I've got a few. Of the weaknesses, <laughs> I'm sure you've got lots of strengths too. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching live or you're watching the replay. If you're watching the replay, I'd love to know. Just put hashtag replay in the comments below. That would be awesome. And also, as I always ask, where in the world are you watching from? If you're watching live, it's also great to have you here. Um, I'm I'm dialing in from just south of Manchester. Where, where are you dialing in from, Ben? Just south of Reading, so west of London. Awesome, cool. Well, it's important to important to to realise that we've got people, we've had people all over the world coming onto the show, and so it's great to have another Brit on the show. We've we've had quite a few uh, Americans on recently, and people from Israel and other parts of the world. So it's awesome. Awesome to have that. And uh, yeah, this is a it's a big topic at the moment, obviously. I know a lot of people who are having to work from home now uh, because of the unmentionable mm. word. And they are met some, obviously, a lot of conferences have had to, in fact, most conferences and events have had to be cancelled. So I expect you're pretty busy at the moment with, uh, you know, managing and maintaining Hey Summit, which is virtual conference software. It has become somewhat busy over the coming over the previous weeks. It's well, it's a sea change. There's no other way of looking at it. it, it it's yeah. it's an you know an absolute shutdown, not just of commerce globally, but um, yeah. of of all of those events that have been you know long in the planning for. Um, and suddenly, event organisers are finding that they don't have a venue, they they don't have an audience, they don't have the platform to deliver that event on anymore. So um, yeah, we've seen a massive surge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, if this has affected you in any way, let us know. And if you've got any questions for Ben, we, I'm going to be talking about the, the the difficulties and the positive side of things of moving from a real life event into do, using a virtual summit and how we can use Hey Summit for that. And also where live video fits into all of this as well. So that's going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll be, uh, we'll be with you just after this. See you in a bit. This is the Confident Live Marketing Podcast. Confident Live Marketing Podcast with Ian Anderson Gray, helping entrepreneurs level up their impact, authority, and profits through the power of live video. Gain confidence in front of the camera, confidence with technology, and confidence with the content and marketing. Together, we can go live! Hello, this is episode 48 of the Confident Live Marketing Show. My name is Ian Anderson Gray. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to make a virtual or how to host a virtual live event. I've got Ben Dell, the founder of Hey Summit on the show. So that's going to be awesome. But first, I wanted to introduce my first sponsor of the show, which is Restream. Restream is an awesome platform for multicasting, multi-streaming your live videos to all the different platforms you want to go live to. So you could see that Restream is the complete multi-streaming suite for entrepreneurs. So with Restream, you can stream to multiple platforms all at the same time, which is what I'm doing at the moment. So they have a plethora of destinations, including LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Twitch, Periscope, and loads, loads more. You can stream from another tool to Restream, and then Restream will take care of that multi-streaming for you really easily. Or you can broadcast directly from Restream to the platform of your choice. Restream also has a chat facility, analytics, and a scheduler. So with the chat facility, you can view and engage 
with your audience across all the different destinations that you stream to, which is really important because you don't want to stream to all these platforms and then not engage with people. That would be dreadful. And I've also been really blown away by the analytics section. So this is really important because you want to go and see how your live streams have been doing. So you can see stream metrics like how many viewers, the watch minutes, new followers, and more. And then finally, the scheduler, or scheduler, depending on how you pronounce it, allows you to broadcast pre-recorded video live. So it's really cool. And I definitely recommend checking out Restream. They've got a free version and a number of paid platforms to play. Paid to, um, plans is the word. Plans. So if you go to iag.me forward slash Restream, you can find out more. So I'm excited to have Ben Dell on the show. This is really, really awesome because um, Ben is the, the founder of Hey Summit, which is a virtual summit software. So Ben is the founder of a number of SaaS companies. Missing Letter is one of them, Hey Summit, Help Shelf, and more recently, Onboard Flow. He previously owned a web agency for over 10 years, which has been acquired. And during this, that time, he also launched a number of SaaS startups, two of which were acquired, one by David Canstall from Drift. Ben is passionate about empowering businesses and brands with tools that help them succeed. Ben, great to have you on the show. How are you doing? Hello, very well. I, I'm not just empowered about empowering businesses, but I'm keen on actually powering my laptop. And I've just seen my battery going down. So just a warning. My battery might be dying out on me in a second, so uh, oh, let's dear. see how it goes. Let, what, what percentage are you at now? We're, we're on 24%. It was on 40 about two minutes ago, so let's see how, let's oh, see how this develops. Oh, dear. That's not good, is it? Well, shall we get on with the? Let's get on with the, the show. I was going to ask you a, a quick quiz, but I think considering the the issue with your battery i think we should get stuck in with the the meaty Absolutely. subjects which is which is awesome so we met a couple of years ago in fact more than a couple of years ago in manchester i think am i right yeah i think it was probably about 4 years ago at um, yeah. new media europe a social media conference i think physical event um i think you were speaking at the time if memory serves me and uh, yeah we we chatted and uh, uh, you know, got to have a little conversation around social media and 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 getting that message out there. Yeah, that was that was awesome. And I, I think you were this was when you were doing Missing Letter, which is still around. It's a Missing Letter is a fab tool, and if you haven't checked it out, do it's Missing Letter without the final e dot com. Missing Letter, yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> although you have to always spell it, people, which is the sounded clever answer. at the beginning, but uh, yes, when you have to explain <laughs> it every single time and then explain oh, which of the letters is missing, it uh, it does become a little bit tiresome. But yeah, it, it yeah. sort of works. Sort of works. So that was at New Media Europe, but uh, yeah, I think we've met yeah. at least once after that i'm pretty sure i can't remember do you know it's funny when you the, the virtual event virtual meetings and real life meetings merge into one and that's kind of that's kind of quite funny really because it just show you the power of virtual conferences virtual meetups as well so i wanted to ask you how did hey summit the software start and i, re I seem to remember you telling me about this before but uh, just just tell us how how it actually started well as with most things that I do, it always starts off with a far too ambitious um, of an idea that um, feels good when I come up with it. And then when I wake up the next morning, sort of the, the reality of it hits home and, and, and I you know, now, now find myself with a massive task ahead to actually bring it to fruition. So uh, this was no different. I, I um, found myself for a missing letter, I think it was about a year and a half ago, um, twiddling our thumbs, thinking, well, what should we do over the summer period for our customers? Something that was free, delivered a bit of value, um, helped, would, would help maybe educate our, our customers um, and just give them some extra sort of value. And so I thought of putting on a, a one or two week um, webinar series where maybe we do two webinars, one, one week, one another week. We bring in some experts talking about social media and bam, we would offer it for free. People would be able to get some value and people would you know, enjoy their summer a little bit more. Um, but then I woke up the next morning and realized that that was a little bit too boring um, and lots of people do that. So I thought, well, let's turn it into a summit. Let's turn it into more of a physical, well, not, not a physical, but an actual sort of um, uh, predefined sort of uh, uh, a slot of time, an event, if you will. Um, and that then quickly spiraled into maybe a, a one week summit that would maybe have five to 10 speakers to ending up being a 100 speaker summit. Um, I thought it sounded like a nice round number. Um, and something that would maybe um, make it a little bit easier to market, attract the speakers and everything else. So within a matter of 48 hours, I'd, I'd fully committed to putting on a 100 speaker event. 
And then I woke up the next morning and realized that there was no single platform out there that would actually let me do that. Um, and so I was faced with either paying a developer or designer to actually do something bespoke, maybe piecing together a WordPress thing over here, a Zoom thing over there, and just hobbling all these things together, but, but not really ending up with the solution and the brand that I really wanted to deliver. Um, and so I decided not only would I put on this event and host it and uh, do the recruitment and reach out to all the speakers and promote it and find sponsors, but I would also build the platform that would let, let me do all of that and, and deliver it um, in the first place. Um, and so that was a very busy six weeks because I um, had already committed to the date. So I had a, a solid six to eight weeks, I think it was, to actually do all of that. Um, it was successful. Fortunately, I think we had 102, maybe 101 speakers, one cancelled on me. So we were able to meet that 100 um, uh, goal. Um, and by the end of it, kind of realizing um, what we'd actually created, um, a platform that was in incredibly powerful in, in, in helping um, people like ourselves, companies like us, um, deliver these really, really um, well-crafted, on-brand, high-quality um, summits. Yeah, that's- Hey, that's, Summit was born. That's amazing. Well, I remember when you put on that first event and thinking, oh my goodness, a hundred speakers. And you, you were-, you were hosting a lot of these as well. I remember you were on them and the, and you were helping manage the development of this tool. Yeah, that's a big, but I think sometimes if you have this big deadline in front of you, it just, you, it shows how much we can actually achieve, you know, Absolutely. when we have that. And uh, I, I can definitely, I've had that experience as well. Having said that, you know, we don't always want to, you know, rush things and, and, and have these deadlines stressing out our lives, but uh, you have produced this amazing thing as a result, which is cool. Which is, I just want to bring in some quite, I've got some people watching live on LinkedIn, which is great. Marcello is watching from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Wade is speaker is here from Lakeland, Florida. Great to see you, Wade. And David, uh, David Bain is here and he says, hi, Ian, hope you and your family are well in these challenging times. Always good to hear uh, about new virtual uh, virtual summit software recommendations and definitely recommend hey summit so okay this might seem a bit of a silly question uh, i suppose there are there are two answers to this there's pre uh, the, the pre what's happening at the moment and what's happening at the moment in terms of the virus why virtual summits is the question <laughs> yeah good question i mean if you think about the well i say re history but relative history of content marketing and marketing more more widely uh, across the web and pretty much everyone is a digital business in some form um we, we started out delivering web pages or uh, sorry uh, blog posts um so so the written word and then slowly sort of video crept into those blog posts so they would be supplemented with video and then web people started doing webinars and so i think summits is a is the natural progression of, of that it doesn't mean that everyone has to end up doing summits but it is a natural progression and webinars have been around for you know in, in a popular sense for, for many many years now and um, have proved to be a very very effective way to deliver content just like we're doing now this is effectively a webinar um, and the, the the additional benefits you get with a summit is that you get to package a, a collection of webinars if you will around a theme uh, or a common interest um, to effectively enable you to really broaden your scope in terms of the sponsors you might be able to bring on, the speakers you might be able to attract, the depth you can actually go into across the subject matter, so you can have different themes across different days. Um, and of course, from a more broad sort of uh, attendee uh, uh, sort of reach, you can attract a, a far greater number because you're packaging it up as a as a product, if you will, in, in, in many senses, rather than a one-off webinar. So it enables you to do a lot more. And, and what's, what's perhaps most important is that as the person or the entity or the business hosting it, you get to really be seen as, as a thought leader in that respective space. And that's perhaps the most important um, point, that, that without delivering actual content, you, through osmosis, are, are seen as um, the, the provider of that information. And, and, the, um, and that's a, a really, really powerful, undervalued um, aspect. No, that's really helpful. Helpful stuff. All those things are really, really positive ways, positive reasons of choosing virtual summits. Really important question. How's your battery doing? I, I don't know if this is a good thing or bad thing, but it's gone up to 41, but then a second ago it went back to 24. So something needs fixing. <laughs> By the way, it is plugged in. 
Um, but that doesn't seem to be helping it. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll it, there we go. It. It's, it's not it's not emergency situation yet. So, okay. Well, um, yeah, if you've got any questions for Ben in terms of virtual summits, if you have had a conference that has been cancelled, that you've had to cancel it, and you're wanting to move over to a virtual summit, just let us know, either if you're watching live or just afterwards, and um, I'm sure Ben will be able to get back to us. And so I wanted, I wanted to ask you um, about really any tips for people in that situation. I've been speaking to uh, some conference organizers who have had to make the decision yesterday to cancel their big event that's happening in July, and they're heartbroken. And I, I hear this day in, day out of people having to conference, uh, to cancel their conferences. So have you got any tips for conference and event organizers who are thinking about moving over to a virtual summit? Or maybe even they haven't even thought about it yet. And they're a little bit anxious. They've never done this before. Have you got any tips on, on that transition, what they need to think about? Yeah, well, first of all, my heart goes out. We were all <laughs> literally having to, to sort of change uh, our, our operations and how we approach things and, and none less than those that were previously planning to put on a, a, a you know physical events. I've spoken to people over the coming days that, that you know, have put down deposits in the hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars um, sort of level and have no recourse to getting that back. Um, so people are really massively damaged or, or, or you know, being, being impacted by these. Um, but there is some good news. Um, if you have put on a physical event or if you're planning to and that's been cancelled, you are in a a pretty good position because you already have most of the components needed to put on a virtual summit. Remember, a virtual summit is really an event without the physical space. It's, it's being delivered in a, in a virtual way like, like we're delivering now. And so the things that you already have, um, which are real positives, you, you already have speakers. Those speakers will already have talks in mind, almost certainly prepared as well. Um, and they're comfortable on stage. Therefore, they're obviously comfortable on camera as well. You probably already have a bunch of um, early sales, if not all of the sales. And so people who are ready and willing, wanting to watch that content, you probably already have sponsors who, who would be very open in most cases to having a different but a similar platform with which to get their brand across. So you've got pretty much everything um, ready to go. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to think about um, how that might be wrapped together and and you know, when you get to the nitty gritty, and I know, I know, Ian, we might be talking about this in a minute, but you, you, they don't have to be delivered live, the talks themselves. So if that's a, uh, an anxious um, point for you because you're not so comfortable with the technology, you can actually deliver the talks in a pre-recorded sense. Um, and that in many ways um, helps you really plan ahead so you can, you know, reach out to your speakers, have them provide the recorded videos. They can do it in their own space, on their own time. Um, and then you upload them and, and, and build the landing pages and, and everything else. Um, so it doesn't have to be as stressful as it otherwise would need to. Um, but if you have, you know, if you have any questions at all, um, we've got a fantastic support team um, who, you know, are, are there to help, you know, any concerns or any sort of queries that you might have. But I, it doesn't dismiss the fact that, yeah, there must be a huge amount of anxiety at the moment. Um, but, yeah, I, I think there's a good opportunity also um, uh, ahead. Well, yeah, so if you want to check out Hey Summit, um, Hey Summit is at heysummit.com which is uh, quite easy. No to missing read. letter there. <laughs> no, no missing letter. It's not, it's not summit with one T or anything like that. It's, so that's very easy. And yeah, that, that's great that uh, people can ask those questions because I think it is a bit of an anxious time for a lot of people. And yes, I think it doesn't have to be done live and you don't even need to necessarily show your face on the camera. I mean, I think some people, some speakers I've spoken to are very okay. They're okay at speaking in front of hundreds or thousands of people. But when it comes to in front of the camera, somehow they they get scared. And it's probably because sometimes the camera is, a, I, I kind of call it an energy sucking device. It tends to suck your energy and you don't tend to get the same amount of energy as you would if you spoke in front of lots of people. But you don't, first of all, you don't have to speak in front of the, you don't actually have to show your face. And second of all, we've had, we've, I've talked about this a lot on the show. There are ways around, are ways of, in, in, of getting over that fear of, of getting in front of the camera. So just uh, look at some of my previous shows and um, there's one about how to warm up your voice and your body just before you go live or do any kind of video. So check that out. So how does Hey Summit actually work? So if you are familiar with the webinar world, which is effectively a single talk in the, in the context of a, of a summit, um, what you're doing there is you're using a tool like Zoom or Vimeo Live or YouTube Live or Facebook Live or something like that to deliver a single piece of content. Um, what we do is we help you connect 
with whatever that platform is that you want to use to deliver that content and then do everything else around it to sort of manage that that entire event or summit experience that you would expect to to receive so if you if you imagine you've got the video or the talk and all the other things that you then need that's what hey summit does so from attendee management to sponsorship management to setting up giveaways creating tickets we've generated hundreds of thousands of dollars in the last months alone for our um, uh, event owners uh, event organizers running their own events so these can be revenue generating um, uh, events in their own in their own right um, and so we manage that entire process and we give you landing page builders and you know literally within a few clicks and, and this is you know no you know, no, no sort of uh, word of a lie there in a few clicks you can have a landing page you can have your first couple of speakers added with the talk title and description and everything else. Um, and you're basically ready to start taking registrations. And from that point forwards, you can then monitor um, how many registrations you're getting, how many times they're sharing it socially um, and all those sorts of things. That's awesome. So it is the platform. It, it basically helps you manage all the other stuff that you would need to do with a with a kind of in-person conference, such as managing sponsors, managing the speakers, managing signups, yeah, it's pretty yep. much sounds like it's all it's all covered, and so people can. So if people want to to pay for that. I mean, if they've already paid for the conference, uh, presumably that can still work. Or if they haven't paid and you're wanting to, this is a new conference and you want people to pay. Can people pay through the platform, or can they can absolutely. you transfer yeah. people onto it? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, as I say, we've generated hundreds of thousands of, of pounds for our customers um, uh, in the last few months alone um, because they have done exactly that. They've created paid all access passes or tickets, whatever you want to call them, um, and uh, people have purchased those through the platform. So you can decide whether you want a free um, and, and quite, a, quite a common approach is actually to have a free ticket for the live broadcasts. So if people watch it live, they get to watch it for free and then maybe have a paid ticket to watch the library of replays that would would obviously then be uploaded um, afterwards. That's quite a common way to do it. You could go fully free, you could go fully paid. It's entirely up to you. And for those that have already run or who were planning to run um, uh, physical events, and as you said, already have attendees that have already paid for that access, um, you can also create coupons within the platform as well. So you, what you could do is, is issue a special 100% um, off coupon to all of those that have already paid they would redeem that against one of the new paid tickets on here. Uh, and that's a good way of offering it for paid to new attendees, but then allowing your existing ones to get hold of it for free. That's really awesome. And so, so yeah, you can, you can definitely do that. And of course, the, the other great thing that you mentioned, of course, is that people get the replay of these. They don't have to watch live. In fact, you don't have to do live at all. You can just watch the replay and, and people can access all of that, presumably through the Hey Summit platform. Yep, all fully integrated. And this is a really important point, actually, that unlike a physical event that, yes, you sometimes might have a follow up email and maybe you'll they'll be on a marketing list. But that's you know, largely where it ends with a summit because it starts online. It doesn't actually need to stop or end. And so what it, you know, what we try and encourage our our customers to think of is that their summit is that ongoing marketing stream, if you will, a content marketing um, uh, sort of destination long into the future. So if you imagine, you know, the, the, the analogy there is writing a blog post once and then you get that snowball effect over time where people start sharing that blog post, coming back to your blog, reading others, and then obviously landing on your main website, signing up, paying for your book or whatever that product is that you sell. The exact same thing applies here. After your event, you have now a library of content that is rich in detail, rich in media, hyper tuned to your theme or your your, your topic, whatever that is that you're, you're, you're basing it on. Um, and it becomes a magnet for new a, a new audience well into the future. So it's really, really powerful um, for that reason as well. Uh, that's really, really awesome. We, we've got some uh, lovely comments here. So Alison Battersby is watching on LinkedIn. It's great to see you. She says, hey, from the UK. So we've got the, hey, UK, hey. We've got the UK crowd here. And watching on Facebook, we've got uh, Richard Dancy here saying, very useful. Thanks, Ian. He also asks uh, a question. So this is a really interesting question. Uh, he says, how about virtual exhibition stands at a conference? Do you know of anyone doing this at all? So that's an interesting thing. At, at a mm. physical conference, you would have exhibitors there and of course you've got sponsors and i know you manage sponsors on the web on on hey summit can you maybe tell us a little bit more about summit uh, sorry sponsors and have you got any ideas of, about virtual ex ex exhibition stands how you would do that 
Yeah, good, good question. So uh, quickly with the sponsors, um, they are digital sponsors in that sense. So they, you, you can have different categories. So either a category sponsor, so they're pinned to a theme within your within your um, uh, summit. Um, so you can sort of sub categorize your, your your sort of lower tier sponsors, and then you have your main sponsors. And depending on where they are, will dictate how much exposure they get across your summit landing pages and everything else. So a main sponsor is on your landing page. They get included in the footer of every single email that goes out through the platform. So remember, Hey Summit hand, handles all email reminders to the speakers, to the to the to the attendees, the wrap up emails, all that sort of stuff. Um, so they get sort of presence, if you will, in emails and then across the website as well. Um, with the exhibition stands, we don't actually handle that yet, but it's something that as a result of the coronavirus climate that we're in at the moment, and, and we're seeing a lot of physical event organizers coming to our platform, they're coming from a world where they're used to having those sort of stands, um, or certainly the, the ethos behind it. Um, and so we're, we're certainly discussing that internally to see whether there's anything we can do there. And I think it's a natural um, progression that we will um, sort of th think about rolling out over, over, over due course. That's a really, really interesting one. So Richard, if you've got any ideas on, on how that could look, let us know. If, if you're watching or listening, I, I, I'm sure Ben would be interested. Mm, in definitely. Um, oh, <laughs> Lee, Lee Matthew Jackson says, uh, Benjamin has an excellent hairdo. I approve from a fellow baldy. I... <laughs> it is rather good. I, I, I have to admit. Yeah, well, there we go. And <laughs> Carrie Ray is here. She says, great info, uh, she says. So thank you, Carrie, for joining us. It's great to have you here. Um, always, good, always lovely to have uh, the, my regular watchers on the, sh on, on the show. It's great. So, um, yeah, we, we've got an example of uh, a, a summit, an online summit, which I will share just after my next sponsor. Um, but um, So, yeah, if you've got any more questions for, for Ben, just pop it in the comments and I will ask ask him. Definitely. So it's time to bring in my next sponsor, who is none other than Content 10X. Content 10X have been sponsoring the show pretty much from the start. They're experts in content repurposing. So the great thing about live video is that once you've planned and prepared your live video, you press that start broadcast button, you deliver it, you press the end broadcast button. A lot of people will then just leave it to kind of disappear off the face of this earth. But how about making it into a piece of evergreen content that will basically explode across the interwebs in a plethora of different content? And that's what Content 10X do. They are a full end-to-end -end content repurposing service. So they will take that one piece of content, in our case, live video, and they will repurpose it to into lots of different types of content. So it could be, for example, into a podcast, into a blog post, into social media images, into an infographic, that kind of thing. And the great thing about this is it helps you focus on running your business, but allows you to reach new audiences and also saves you time. And I'm a big believer in that. So if you don't have the time and you wanting to get somebody else to do this, Content 10X are the people for you. Check them out at content10x.com. But if you want to do it yourself, or you, if you want to learn how to repurpose your content, then again, they can help you. They've got a blog, they've got a podcast, and they've got a book. So just check them out at content10x.com. Awesome. Right, how's your battery doing? It's on 23. It's not going up. Oh dear, so, right. But it's not going down either. So let's 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 let's, let's carry on. So um yeah, I wanted to just to share. You you mentioned uh this Unleash Virtual Summit um just before. Now let me just find my screen. So there we go. I think we can see that now. So yeah, just tell us a little bit about this. This is an example, I, I think, isn't it, of a of a virtual summit. This is what it could look like. Uh, I mean, this looks like um quite a posh website. How how does this work? Well, I must confess, this is I mean, this is the beauty of, of, of building products and then seeing how your customers use them, because um, our, our normal look and feel or our theme, our default theme doesn't look anything like this. It's still beautiful, but it's it's a totally different style to this. So this is an example of a customer completely customizing the look and feel to be on brand for their particular brand. Um, but and with that aside, it's 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 what you would kind of expect. You've got your call to actions. So you've got the, you know, just above, you've got your um, uh, sign up form so people can register for the event. So just slightly further down. Um, so, people, so attendees can register there and, and sign up. And we go through a whole registration process where they can discover the content and choose the content that they care about. Um, because remember, if you're putting on a summit that is anything more than 15 or 20 talks, 
Um, you might not want to have your attendees be automatically booked into all of them because that might be overload. And, and actually, there's value in having your attendees choose the talks that they care about because you then get to learn what are the topics and subject matters that um, your audience actually cares about and, and, and wants to tune, tune into. Um, so, yeah, if you look at this one here, they've got quite a few um, talks there. So um, as part of the registration process, we would help um, attendees discover that content. Um, and then the rest is is just built out from there. So, you know, we, we've got a list of the speakers that we're seeing here. Um, each speaker has their landing page. And then from there, you can go into their talks, um, uh, which is quite powerful. This, so this bit at the top, it's showing you the, the topics and the themes that they are linked to. Um, this person seems to have two talks going on, which is good. So you can click into one of those talks and then that will give you more information about that talk. These are just landing pages. This is just really to engage. This is your marketing suite. And this is all created automatically for you. The second you create your your first talk and your first speaker, all of this is built up around automatically for you. So you don't have to use a developer or a designer. Um, it's all done for you. Um, and then it's all about just gathering up those um, those attendee uh, registrations over over time. That's awesome. Well, that's I mean, that, it just shows you the power of your software that you can create these landing pages for all the different speakers very, very quickly and easily. And how, how does the, the sponsors work? Is that a very similar thing to adding speakers? You just add the sponsors and they appear? Yep, yep super simple. So, so at this stage, it's worth noting that we don't get in the way or handle uh, the payment or the, or, the or the sending out of invoices or receiving money from sp uh, sponsors, yeah. um, if that's indeed how you're structuring it. Um, so we assume that you do that off site. Um, and so it's really just a case of uploading your speaker, uh, sorry, sponsor in terms of the name, their logo, and then deciding whether they're a main sponsor, um, sort of platinum level, if you will, um, or a category level sponsor. And then that's it. They, they will automatically be pulled through into the landing pages, the emails and everything else. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and obviously, you know, people, summits are likely to have fewer sponsors than than speakers and, and uh, attendees. So that's something that you would want to probably manage on a case by case. Basis. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. So that makes sense. So obviously, on this show, we talk a lot about live video. And I know that Hey Summit integrates with different live video platforms, whether that's you know, it depends on how you define uh, live video, of course, whether it's webinars mm. or pre-recorded video, or it's obviously not live video. So you've got a choice, haven't you, of either doing it, just uploading pre-recorded. Can you tell us a little bit more about how we can deliver our videos and, and how can we integrate live video into a virtual summit using Hey Summit? Yeah, good, good, good question, because we are effectively technology agnostic when it comes to the um, platform or the medium that you want to use to deliver the actual talk uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's because we kept, we're we focused much more on the experience, helping you generate revenue, traction, audience share, and all that sort of stuff. So when it comes to actually deciding how you want an individual talk to be delivered, you have a choice. You can have one of three categories to choose from. One is a, a webinar, um, and, and a webinar provider would be um, Zoom or Big Marker um, and, or live webinar. Those are the three that we work with um, at the moment. You literally connect and then we will automatically manage that behind the scenes for you. So you don't have to manually create the webinars or anything like that. Um, the second tier is 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 probably more uh, down your sort of street in, which is the live stream routes. And so we work with Vimeo Live, YouTube Live, uh, and pretty much any RMTP um, live stream. And that will basically be embedded within um, the talk page on Hey Summit. Um, and then the third option um, is a pre-recorded video. And the beauty um, of, of, of the platform in, in so far as choosing how you want it delivered is that you can do it on a talk by talk basis. So I actually hosted a, a summit just Monday and Tuesday this week, um, a 48 hour one. We had about 15, 16 speakers, I think. Um, and all of them were live apart from three. So that gives you the flexibility, whether it's because you want them to be pre-recorded or whether it's the, the speaker that needs them to be pre-recorded because they're traveling or perhaps they just prefer that medium. Maybe they're more comfortable doing it as a pre-recorded. So you can mix and match um, depending on how your speaker and you would like them to be delivered. That makes sense. That makes sense. And so one one way you could do it with, with live video is you could live stream to YouTube Live. That's probably a very good one and, and change the privacy settings to unlisted. And then, and then embed that on Hey Summit. That would be a, a, an easier way to do it, I suppose, or you know, wh whatever platform you like. But as, as you say, I mean, different speakers will feel comfortable with doing it live. Some may not. And uh, yeah, you, it just really depends on on what you're wanting to do. Uh, 
advice that I found to, to, to work really well for those that are coming to summits for the very first time is to, and I know this is your game, which is which is live video and everything else, but would almost to say, don't worry about how you deliver the talks. Yeah. The, you know, whether it's live, webinar, pre-recorded, don't worry about it. Just just I would almost say just just do it pre-recorded or, or, or whatever for now for the first one, because it's so much more important to yeah. get comfortable with delivering it as an overall sort of all encompassing event. Get comfortable with the platform, but also the, the nature of a summit. Um, and then what we find is that when people put on their second, third and fourth summits, they then really start sort of finding their groove in terms of the, the, the medium that they like to or prefer to um, deliver the talks in. Yeah, I think that's really stellar advice, it, particularly if this is completely new to you and you're wanting to move from an in-person physical event to a virtual event, live video might just be that one step too far. It's, mm. just, it's, it's just adding too much complexity to it. So yes, there are obviously advantages about live video, which we've talked a lot about on, on the show, but just you know, don't try and, and overcomplicate things. I think that's some great advice. We've got a comment from Shade uh, who's asking, how many themes come with Hey Summit? Well, this is the interesting thing. We actually only have one theme as it stands today, but you can drop in JavaScript and you can override the CSS. So that example is stood out. We, we, we all sort of um, uh, jumped out of our seats almost as a team the other day because so incredible what they were able to do despite the fact that we, we only had one theme. Um, so that's what people have been able to do without theming. Um, but in, in the coming weeks and months, we will be releasing our own theming technology that will make it far, far, far easier. So um, this is just the beginning in terms of um, personalizing and customizing your your sort of style. That's awesome. And presumably, so I, I think with the different prices, you do have different plans, don't you? You can, yep. you can have you can have it on your own domain name or you can have it hosted on yours. I mean, how, how does that all work? Yep. So you can choose a custom domain, um, which typically would be summits.com yourwebsite.com or whatever you want it to be. It could be event, it could be summit, uh, whatever that C name is. Um, but we've actually just rolled, started rolling out support for subdirectories as well. So if you're an SEO marketing sort of person and you are listening to me say that and you think, yeah, but I need it to be a sub path on my domain, we actually now support that. So you could have, um, you know, example.com slash summit 2020 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a bunch of different ways of doing it. That's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Well, that's awesome. So how can how can people find out more? Uh, and presumably the best place is Hey Summit, is, is heysummit.com? Yeah, head to heysummit.com. We are also, and very poorly prepared of me, but we've, uh, maybe I'll follow up um, afterwards. But we do have also, I think it's weekly, maybe even bi-weekly, um, live webinars um, taking place, obviously, through the platform. Um, for those that are specifically looking at moving from a what was supposed to be a physical event to um, a, an online summit. So we're calling them office hours um, and it's specifically oriented around helping those running physical events. Um, so if you're, if, if you're not, I don't think annoyingly that we have a link to it on the, on the landing page. So go to heysummit.com, click the support button and reach out to our support team and they will tell you straight away. If not, I will send you a link um, in and you can share it. Um, yeah. in your, in your well, I'll definitely, I'll definitely put that in the show notes. I can see uh, on your page, you've, you've got something about the coronavirus here. So you've got a guide yes. there. So that might be a good place to go to. Um, talks about uh, make, take your conference virtual. So yeah, maybe have a look at that. And, and then, yeah, we'll, I'll definitely put some, if you can t tell Absolutely. me, I'll put that in the, in the show notes and in good. the comments. That'd be awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ben. It's been great to have you on the show. It's just also good to have a, another chat. It seems a, a long time since we've uh, spoken, um, but I, I really, really appreciate you taking this time out of your busy schedule to come on the show. Absolute pleasure. And I don't know if you remember, but the the that 100 speaker event that I put on that then became Hey Summit, I think you spoke at it. I did, yes. I, I remember. So there is a lovely cycle here a little sort of um sort of complete sort of loop going on there i know it's funny it is funny the way it works oh we just got another comment from dave brown saying this is a good timely topic thank you ian yes well mm. uh, it's certainly is well we, i'm do, trying to do my best to provide content that's going to be helpful to all the people that this has affected very badly so we've got some lots of other really helpful shows coming up soon if you've got any ideas of the kind of topics that i can talk about on the show then let me know i'd love to know so i basically just in the case you didn't know i broadcast this usually every week this week i've actually done three because I'm, i've obviously wanted to do more so it's linkedin live facebook um periscope as well so if you just 
find find me, Ian Anderson Gray, on all those platforms. But the, probably the best place to go to is iag.me forward slash podcast, where you can subscribe to the podcast, read the show notes, and you can also watch all the videos as well. But thank you, Ben. It's been great to have you on. And until next Pleasure. time, I encourage you to level up your impact, authority, and profits using the power of Confident Live Video. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Confident Live Marketing Podcast with Ian Anderson Gray. Be sure to join the community at iag.me where you can continue to level up your impact, authority and profits through the power of live video. And until next time, toodaloo.